Tales from the Human Target, issue 1, Tom King writing with Mikel Yan and Kevin Maguire, Raphael Albuquerque, and a little bit of art by Greg Smallwood. Uh, mm-hmm. He does kind of a wraparound style yeah. thing. Um, so I always expected an anthology with like three different stories sp- spaced mm-hmm. out. Instead, all three of them are mixed up, and you get kind of them all playing out. So it's, it's bouncing around the three of them as you go through the book. So the art's constantly changing, but it's obviously kind of there to help you tell which story you're in, if it's not obvious from the characters or or whatever. Um, so, and just to kind of skip to the end a little bit, the conceit of this story is that this is Ace talking to three different characters mm-hmm. and getting, basically f- finding out what they know about Christopher Chance before she talked to him for the first time. So this is set up the night before, mm-hmm. well, at least one of the conversations is, the hey, last, yeah. the last one, uh, is set the night before uh, she met him in issue two or three, whatever that issue was. So, very interesting. Um, and the, the the small snippets we get of these scenes are the 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 small wood art, and then yeah. we get so so one's a a, a guy gardener story. Yeah, uh, and that that art is by uh, is that the Janin? Uh, I think well the Booster Gold's definitely McGuire. Uh, yeah, for sure. McGuire. Um, and then Albuquerque uh, is the the. No, uh, so Albuquerque's the gardener. Yeah, that's and what I say. I the thought... fire is Janin. Yeah, and those are the three here. Which I do like how they split that up. I wasn't expecting that with the story to go to to weave in and out of certain characters, um, and I, and I do feel it was it was put together extremely well. Yeah, and what's funny about it is that, you know, each story has someone who seemingly is either going to be killed or is killed, and it's not really that much of a twist to guess early on. In all three cases, they're going to tr- turn out to be human target. They're, they're all going yeah. to turn out to be him. Um, and it's kind of this interesting way to play with it where, so the the, the Brother Blood Guy Gardner story is that this, yeah. that this rich guy got... Celebrity, uh, like son of a celebrity type. Yeah, he, but he's, yeah. In, he's in an accident and he ends up in the Brother Blood call and Guy Gardner takes, you know, offense to that and all his actions. So he goes to beat him up and try to convince him that he's not in the call. But it turns out, of course, eventually that it's Christopher Chance. He's like, look, I'm taking the job to infiltrate Brother Blood's cult so that I can get to him and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's okay, so that's one way you do it, and that's good. that's maybe more the comical one because just well, mm-hmm. two of them are comic because Booster Gold's pretty funny too. Uh, yeah. But you've got that, and then the Booster Gold one is that this writer, this author, has got a bounty in his head, so people keep trying to kill him. So Booster Gold decides to take it upon himself to protect him and be his bodyguard, which is actually messing things up because the whole point is is that Christopher Chance is pretending to be this guy and wants to be killed publicly so that whoever's put out the bounty will think he's dead and the writer can live in secret for the rest of his life. That's what he wants. So Let me just say, the number of times I laughed out loud in this booster story... Oh, I'm sure. Oh, my goodness. Like, King, I would just love for King to do a comical booster story. And I don't know who you get to do, Art McGuire or whoever, <laughs> but, man, this some of that one... So so you've got that. I'm, I'm, I'm summarizing before we talk about them yeah. in depth. And then the other one, which is the fire story, is that fire, this is when her modeling days, her photographer, who she was kind of close to but didn't know too much about, got shot and died. And she stayed with him all the way to the hospital. Uh, Then he died. I mean, he didn't die right away. He he died in the hospital there. Uh, but then she stuck with the body. She stayed with them uh, for the funeral and for, and it's not even a proper funeral because there's no family members, but it's just like he's being cremated. And she stays with them the entire way, make sure he gets a coffin. And the whole point is, is that Chance was waiting to be alone so he could like swap out his disguise and continue his investigation mm-hmm. and find out who was killing the dude or whatever. And she was being so nice and sweet and so empathetic that it actually stopped him from doing his job. So, there's the, so that's the one that's kind of a less funny, a bit more of a sweet yeah. vibe to it. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the three stories that are being told uh, throughout these. But they're, 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 you know, it's like a 45-page book, uh, mm-hmm. and we're bouncing around all these stories. Obviously, all the art is very good, but it's different between yep. each story. Uh, how, what did you feel about this one? What did you make of it? I No, this is, uh, again, high, one of the highlights of my week. Because, again, I was expecting, like, anthology style. So I thought we were going to a booster story with McGuire. But it would all be told in one. The yeah. fact that it weaved in and out and they all hit their emotional 
you know, crux at the same time. Just it, it's really picture perfect storytelling. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, like, I got a lot of... Because even before we got the reveal, this idea that this writer didn't want Booster around, uh, and, you know, Booster kept showing up, and he keeps, keeps saying things that are factually incorrect. Like, you know, I I wrote my own uh, my memoir, yeah. and Skis is like, no, you didn't. I wrote it. It's like, yeah, I, but I, I dictated it. No, you didn't. You said write stuff about everything and went to yeah. go get a bagel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, and, and is a bagel a sandwich is that's still going from the booster gold issue. Yeah. Um, once I put together that the writer, so the writer is, there's a, like a hundred million dollar bounty on his head. Cause he wrote an expose about Ra's al Ghul. Uh, and so there's constantly his life is going to be, you know, all these assassins coming out of the woodwork to collect on him. And the idea that booster thinks for a second that he could be one of the people to collect. Cause he can do a lot of stuff with a hundred million dollars. I, that just, so funny to me uh and then the booster keeping him from from like oh i found a bomb in your car i i disabled it you're, you're okay uh and just the expression so mcguire's really good at expressions yeah so I, I think, I, I think you the get strengths i think you get from hindsight as well when you realize mm-hmm. that this is chance and he wants to have a public death to get, yeah. give this guy freedom is that he was probably yeah. putting the bombs there himself yeah yeah and just the look of exasperation on the writer's face, just, it cracked me up. Almost like this guy had a death wish before you put it together that it is Christopher Chance. You're almost like, well, does he have a death wish? Maybe maybe that's why he wrote the book, you know? Um, and then, of course, you know, a couple pages later, you realize it's Christopher Chance. And he's, yeah, maybe he put the bomb there himself. Maybe he, you know, paid the assassin to target him. Um, but yeah, the Gardner story, you know, I, I know I'm a big Guy Gardner fan. Um, but it definitely fits in with the gardener that we were reading already. Oh, yeah, he's a prick. He's a in complete this. prick in yeah. this. <laughs> Although I did like it is very Guy Gardner, a lot of the stuff that I think, you know, I don't know if King went listened to the criticism from that issue that Gary Gardner fans had, but he is a little bit more of an honorable Guy Gardner here, like when he takes the ring off to beat the piss out of this uh, brother, blah, 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 brother blood guy. That is a very Guy moment. You know, yet him talking about how badass he is and stuff that definitely felt more like in character there. Yeah. Um, but but I like that story, too. I would like a mini almost of all of these. And I know that's probably not going to happen, but just like these are all really solid stories. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, they all they all kind of come together because they all benefit each yeah. other when you, by the time you get to the end. Yeah. And you, you're left with kind of this question of, okay, so Ace was doing her research on him. Mm-hmm. Is that because she's just ultimately trying to play him and is like sort of learning about how, like, you know, what he's, you know, what he's, uh, how he works, like his ins and yeah. outs, uh, how he, you know, how do how does she like get to him and corrupt him if if that's what she's trying to do? Because we've had this question of like, is this a genuine romance or is she mm-hmm. the femme fatale? Is she ultimately leading him to his downfall, kind of thing? Uh, so th- this kind of stokes those fires a little bit. Whereas there's nothing implicating in this, I would say, but she could be doing research because she's been a professional and because she's scoping out a target effectively. Right. It also gets me too because the way that it plays fire. As you know, she seems as, as of the last issue that she was featured, she has a lot more to do with, you know, the the Lex Luthor poisoning than maybe we thought, and she has a femme fatale vibe. And then you read this, and the fact that she sat with her with her photographer after he had died, and it kind of runs counter to what we've seen, uh, you know of her in the book so far yeah and you have so, to assume that that's this, interesting yeah and you have to assume that this is a more honest because it's yeah. you know this is this is away from the mm-hmm. uh the the, 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 oh. the main narrative this is just that this right. narrative on its own and her telling this to ace you, you sort of mm-hmm. it, it feels like it has to be more true uh by the way one of my favorite panels in the book is uh when the body actually dies in front of fire mm-hmm. and you get this close-up panel of her eyes with green flames in front of it yeah, uh, I thought that was a really nice panel. I think the other thing that helps the with the art being different in each of these is that also the coloring, uh, the McGuire art, and I love McGuire. I love when he did Supergirl. Uh, is you know it's very sort of flat and silver age and these big bold colors. The the Yannin art has more muted colors with the fire story, yeah. and then Albuquerque has way more shadows and scratchiness to it because that's just Albuquerque mm-hmm. style. So they all have a very distinct look even beyond just the line work. 
which I think yeah. is is really neat. Um, so no, all, all really good stuff. Uh, but that's kind of where I got at the end was kind of like, okay, so these were all human target stories of him impersonating someone because that's kind of his gimmick. But it was kind of like, okay, why is Ace looking for this information? Uh, I wasn't sure how it was going to tie into the main book. I thought it might just be like random different stories and that was it. But the fact that it, by the end it's like, oh no, this was her doing her homework. For better or worse, for whatever reason it is, um, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of a cool way to tie it into the main book and feel relevant yeah. to it. So, uh, very neat. Which is why it's also very genius neat. that those little moments with her are still in small bit art because it still feels like that's yep. the main part of the book, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely. So, uh, so really good. Also, the fact that the eventual death of the writer, the fake death, uh, with mm -hmm. Chance taking the bullet, happens when Booster's standing right next to him doing press and doesn't notice that he gets shot. Yep. It's also genius it, funny. Yeah, yeah it play, plays in, really leans into the Booster stuff here. But yeah, they're just, again, Tom King getting to work with all of these artists at one book. The, the man, again, CIA training, what does he have? Yeah. And also, you know, just on my thing of, like, is, is Ace up to something, and that's why she's doing her homework. The final thing she says also could be interpreted as, no, she just likes the sound of him. You know, because right. uh, Fire says, you know, you have to at least watch out, because when you're with Christopher Chance, it means you're also the target now. And she goes, I am. Well, that sounds, you know, now that I know him a bit, that sounds like fun. So maybe she is just, like, seeing something in him from these stories. Uh, I, You know, even if it was to get rid of Gardner, th if that was her overall plan, <laughs> it worked so you know like you know uh because i still don't know where to feel about her because she does feel like the femme fatale in some moments but in others it feels like someone that is really trying to help him out figure out who poisoned him so uh, but i still think that ultimately the poisoning is like this this job with the with the the writer where this is something that he's doing oh, to, yeah, to, yeah. i think there's for, something else out from issue one I think mm -hmm. the ultimate twist that this is kind of like always hanging over the book is that he's not really dying and this is just another mm -hmm. one of his human target style right you know uh hijinks if you are you he's know trying to flush some someone out of just the like, international and <clears throat> and this is the the way that he's doing it and this this these three stories only show how far he'll go right yeah, like, yeah. he was he was buried and he popped up uh, like a zombie on uh, Yeah, yeah, on fire. He, the, the hand comes out of the grave. Yeah. Pre presumably because he doesn't know if she's left yet, and right. he's surprised to find fire still there watching him. Yeah. So, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, really good stuff. Uh, the art is excellent in all three stories. It's all very distinct yep. and different as well. Um, you know, obviously Guy Gardner looks horrible because of that stupid haircut, but that's not Albuquerque's yeah. fault. Yeah, no, the, the, it is Guy Gardner of that era, so you gotta give him the stupid bowl cut. Yeah. So... So but yeah, but do the fight scene that he draws is is uh, you feel the punches? It's done really viscerally, which I like. Um, it does feel like a slobber knocker. And that's the so. other part as well. I said how different the the art, you know, and the stories is. They're mm -hmm. all very different as well from Smallwood. So when you go back to that, right. you know, the, the the ace part where she's here in the stories, it does feel again very distinct. But it it's also over oh, back in the real you know part yep. of the story, the, the timeline. So I mean, if this existed to give me a bit of flavor and hype me up for a uh, issue seven coming out then yeah uh consider it a resounding success uh so great stuff uh what are you giving tales of the human target issue one i'm giving this a nine i am also going to give this a nine uh Boom. so it is excellent obviously it doesn't necessarily reach the peak of some of the you know the, the great issues in the main book uh, i think i've given like you know nines 9.5s 9 and tens across <laughs> across the last like six issues